What's up, y'all? It's your favorite nail tech, Peaches, back with another video. Now, I'm just gonna say, this is about the 15th time I've recorded this voiceover, and if another noise, distraction, person interrupt me again, baby, I'm through. I'm done, okay? So today, we're gonna go ahead and focus on acrylic toes. We haven't done baby pink on this channel, and today, we're gonna do that because, like I've said before, certain colors are just more difficult to work with, and baby pink is one of those colors, all right? Before we go ahead and get started, we're going to make sure you guys are subscribed, Simply Shakira is our subscriber for today. Turn on the notifications because if they're off, you won't know when I'm uploading. You're going to be lost. You're going to be stranded. You're going to be wondering where the hell Peach is at, where she been. Maybe I'm here. Okay? Your notifications was just off. All right? So this is what we're working with. This is the before. This is not a new client. Um, I did already spray her foot down. My hands are clean and all that. I just didn't show it in this video. We're removing the polish. It's regular polish. I could use acetone, but... It just falls off so easily that it literally doesn't make a difference. We're getting ready to remove the shine anyway, so hey, she's gonna be extra prepped, okay? Now, the funny thing is, when I went to remove her polish, I'm like, girl, is that red under there? And she's like, oh yeah, once the red got old, I painted it with yellow. I said, girl, this is giving ketchup and mustard hamburger hot dog. It ain't no reason that you need to be painting layers upon layers over your regular ass polish not even gel polish regular so i'm like you know what it's a good thing you can because you was suffering all right so the majority of this voiceover is really going to focus on the fact that like i said there's certain colors that are just more difficult to use than others i'm going to go into a little bit of detail about why baby pink is one of those colors and what makes it difficult I'm gonna go ahead and remove the shine. Uh, you know, you can see most of the shine is already removed, so I don't really need to do too much at this point. I didn't push her cuticles back because she don't have very much cuticle skin growing on the nail plate, so it's no need to waste a cuticle pusher on that, all right? So, like I was saying, baby pink, right? It goes in that category of colors with um, white, dark colors such as black, red, and blue. Okay, for some reason, these group of colors are just more difficult to work with. They tend to be not only looser colors, like when you make your beads, you're gonna notice like, even if you do what you normally do, these colors are still gonna remain a lot looser. And then simultaneously, if you wait too long or you dry it out to accommodate for the looseness of the bead, they will stiffen up like nobody's business, okay? And so the reason that I think that these colors are like that is because I do think that either for some of them it's the pigment that's used because of it's more pigment than actual um, you know clear acrylic that's used and so clear is the strongest acrylic and once there's not a lot of clear there it kind of takes away from the makeup like the structure and the makeup of the acrylic and then on the other side right with the like pinks and there's other pastel super duper chalky looking pastels i should add not all but with the pinks and the whites um white is already difficult to use and if you're using a trash brand oh it's going to be unbearable to use that white i do think that baby pink is made with a base of white okay and so you're not just doing like white with pigment you're doing white with a little bit of clear mixed in and pigment i feel like if it's a good um if it's a, a good like baby pink or whatever i do believe they are going to put some clear in there for structural purposes and so it's not just totally so loose or whatever but these things make these colors a lot looser in nature but also they just stiffen up and they will be like blocks of legos okay if you don't know what you're doing it takes time it takes finding the right brand that reacts with the right monomer and there's a lot of different things that you have to learn on your own that's this is not stuff that anyone can necessarily tell you but i'm hoping that my tips will help you figure that out all right so here we go i'm going for the first bead and i already can tell off the bat first of all it was too small and second of all it was not the right texture okay so the second bead you can tell that i'm taking my time getting this bead i'm drying it out some and i'm letting it set before i even put it down so once I put it down, you can see it looks like a typical bead, like, oh, okay, this is going to go well. But as soon as I start to mold it and I, you know, wet my brush so that way my brush won't stick to the acrylic, you can see, look at how the liquid just kind of, you know, reactivates it. That's what I call it. And it just, the acrylic kind of, you know, sucks up some of that moisture and becomes loose again. And you can see right off the bat, it tears. And that's okay. To be honest, it's to be expected and I was not at all surprised by it. I just go ahead and 
uh, work around it by pushing up the free edge like this it's going to put that acrylic back in place and it's going to rebond with itself and then i'm just going to back brush the excess if you do not do this all right and here go these interruptions but you guys uh, no because it's going well okay i'm so sorry so once we push underneath that's gonna put all that excess acrylic push it back up towards the top and i can brush it back and i was so pissed that i went ahead and accidentally smushed this but um yeah you need to push it up because then you can um reuse that acrylic but then also it's keeping the underneath from being so thick because once this dries it's it's dry and you're gonna be having a tough time working with that underneath if it's all stuck to the skin and just really in a bad way okay so you can see that compared to the other colors i've used on my channel right that this particular consistency it's a lot more um translucent looking you can see you can see through it a little bit if there's not enough acrylic there so that's why i'm continuing to back brush because we don't want to keep adding a lot of acrylic to the tip because then that will be unbalanced and when you go ahead to file you're gonna just get rid of like crucial parts of the acrylic if that makes sense like all of the acrylic stuck underneath that's gonna be thick and then if you keep trying to put acrylic on top of that it's just not gonna be balanced you have to make the whole entire toe hella thick to like keep up with the overall like appearance of a smooth surface right so you can see i got a baby it because it's still not dry and honestly by this point if it was a different type of acrylic it might have been already starting to stiffen up and that's the main thing if i were to grab a much bigger bead than what i did and let it set way longer and then put it on it would have been like rock hard very very quickly okay so now at this point i'm pretty satisfied with what it's looking like at the tip and i am going to go ahead and work on the back portion of the nail so this particular bead you can see how it does look a little bit shiny still it seems pretty easy to maneuver around but you need to be careful because like i say once you dip your brush back into your liquid and your brush is like a little bit wet it's going to cause issues like flooding okay we don't want flooding and that's why we need to work smart because trying to get rid of flooding it's gonna it's just gonna be difficult it's just gonna be really difficult so any of the extra that i didn't need i immediately brought it down to the tip it's gonna take care of some of that translucentness that i was dealing with previously and also provide strength okay it's gonna provide some more strength because colors like this are depending they are not as strong if you don't know how to properly use them okay so i'm just going ahead and making sure there's no flooding in that area but in that area over there where i'm touching it's also unbalanced in a way so you can see that it's kind of like a divot or a dip and i need to fill that in because if i don't when i go to file that area is going to be extremely opaque or translucent excuse me so I'm just looking overall to see is everything tucked because once again these colors are thin so if you don't have the proper thickness around the cuticle area when you go to file it's going to file right the hell off and that's not what we want okay so there's like a lot of factors that go into using colors like this you need to take care of flooding you need to be aware of um, you know the looseness of the bead and simultaneously the the drying process Okay, because it's only going to go one or two, one of two ways, and you're not going to know which way it goes until you start working with your bead. I have worked with brands that have um, not been the best, and colors like these are so loose and watery. It's like the beads, they just, they collapse. As soon as you put them down, they completely flatten out. And that's how, that is not a color you want to work with, or I mean a brand that you want to work with, okay? So I'm just continuing to readjust anything that needs adjusting making sure everything has a nice and smooth appearance before i move on because if it is lumpy now it's going to be a pain to correct later on okay so as far as the little toes it is a little bit easier because we are using one small bead that is kind of it's like way more compact because this type of bead on a big toe that's not going to really do too much but this type of bead on a small toe that's going to provide all that we need and it's compacted together so it's not going to be too too loose and as long as you let it set for a little bit that's why i'm kind of just like tapping it here and there to keep to keep the general shape while it sets and once it's kind of 
um, dried enough to the point where I can maneuver it, but it's not, you know, fully dry. That's what we want. So now you can see I'm, I'm able to mold it. It's like clay. I'm able to mold it and do what it is that I need to do. Okay. So you'll probably find that the little toes are either going to be way easier or way more difficult with these colors. Because like I said, if you're using a brand that is not very good, the bead is going to collapse and it's going to be extremely thin and watery. And it's going to be so hard to get any little bit of free edge past um, what's already there on the toenail. And so you can see I'm not building it out a lot. I'm just making sure that we have a nice consistent overall look. This is like gonna end up being a really nice natural looking length um, for her foot because she does have um, toes that are like on the longer side so this is going to look very very nice and natural for her okay so any little areas that you feel like are flooded go ahead and use your brush to clean that up the better you shape it now with your brush the easier time you're going to have later on while you are shaping with your file okay so again once we're happy with it, we're gonna move on. We're not gonna keep messing with it, we're gonna move on. So now for the next toe, same thing. You see I let the bead rest for a little bit. I'm gonna put place it on there, and you can see it does look a little loose, but it seems to be acting as how we need it to. And after it sets, we're gonna push it immediately into the cuticle areas. Because once you push the bead towards the cuticle area, most of the time it's gonna fall in place if you have the right consistency, and it won't flood. So you see how like it just kind of fell into place once we pushed it for, uh, forward and towards that, and then we let it settle for a little bit. And I'm just using these tapping motions. Do not try and swipe these acrylics. Um, it's really it's just gonna take the color away and it's gonna move the acrylic. I, to be honest, it's gonna remove the acrylic. That's why I don't swipe. That's why I always pat, pat, tap, tap, as you can see, because I'm using my brush, it's going to do what I need it to do. If I want the bead to kind of widen up, I'm going to pat it a certain way. If I want to elongate it and lengthen it, I'm going to do like a pat pat and bring it down slightly. Okay. And then we're going to use our brush and we're going to mold the shape of it because it's still in that sweet spot that we need it to be. Okay. So the last two toes is really going to be the same thing. Um, I just, like I said, I really wanted to focus on this. Last time I did a video like this, it was with white. And like I said, honestly, white and black are probably some of the hardest colors to use in acrylic because they both will simultaneously be, they can be very loose, but also very smooth if you get the right brand. But you, you have to know how to work with it and it does take practice, okay? So do not get discouraged if you feel like man i really you know want this type of look but i you know there's there's acrylic in the cuticles and this that and the other you just need to readjust your liquid to powder ratio and you need to focus on letting your beads set a little bit i noticed that there's a lot of people that they grab beads or they do demonstrations let's say someone's doing a demonstration they'll have a bead and like oh look how silky and buttery it is but it's so you can tell like there's still so much liquid in it that when they put it down they're still going to have to let it rest. So don't be scared to drain your beads. You do not have to pick up your bead right away and put it right to the nail. Because if you're having trouble with flooding and lifting, that all coincides, okay? Because flooding leads to lifting. You may not know exactly, you know, if you're working on what flooding looks like and how to avoid it and stuff, it can be tricky because even the slightest little bit of flooding can cause problems. And colors like these, they will flood if you are still working on it and still learning yeah they will tend to flood and they will dry flooded and they will dry unevenly and flooded so then you have to still continue to try and even out the surface and work around the flooding and it can be a nightmare okay so don't get discouraged just practice your your powder to um liquid ratio because every color is not the same i highly doubt someone will do like red toes i've done black toes before and flooding with black is is way way more common only because your brush is going to hold on to the black because it's such a dark color and sometimes that excess can can get trapped and caught around the cuticles but um yeah that's for another video if i ever do black anytime soon again i will go ahead and show you guys and i was so mad that once again here i am 
it's always something if i'm not dropping something or spilling something like it always got to be something i don't know if there's other nail techs who have these troubles or if it's just me but i'm like girl it cannot just be me like there's no way everybody else's everything go perfectly all the time because mine sure the hell don't you know what i'm saying so here we go pinky toe she does have a quite a nice piece of pinky toe again you want to call it she got a nice piece of pinky toe but the same thing applies we're just gonna do it on a slightly smaller scale and you can see i know it's hard to see my hand is in the way i'm sorry but basically on this one i think the tip kind of separated a little bit or something and i had to go in and, and redistribute the way the acrylic is sitting and honestly that's my biggest tip for you with colors like these if you notice it's starting to dry weird or whatever you typically are going to have a good amount of time before it actually dries solid unless you pick up just a ginormous bead and dry it out way too much or whatever but redistributing acrylic that is how you avoid being wasteful i notice a lot of people if something's not right they will take off the whole bead do not take off the whole bead learn how to work with your beads learn how to redistribute your product and just learn how to turn mistakes into no big deal okay that's that's something that y'all are gonna have to work on especially if you find yourself just wasting a lot of product wasting a lot of time just keep going keep pushing because even i get into modes where i'm just so irritated that i just be like girl i'm not even gonna lie this shit is acting up okay so we are gonna go ahead and file the cuticle area sometimes i go ahead and file a free edge first like with my hand file and shape sometimes i do this I really wanted to make sure that everything was properly sealed. I wanted to make sure everything was going to be the right amount of opaque, okay? Because I did not want any of my color to really flake off. You can see in the corner over there, a little tiny bit of it did flake off, but it's not going to be a big deal because once I file the, um, the sidewalls, it'll all align right. So this underneath right here, you got to do it because you saw how I had to do the beads earlier. And how they were breaking and and wanting to be downwards and stuff like that i gotta make sure that everything underneath is all good to go so you need to be careful not to file too high of a speed because these types of colors they will flake around the edges you don't want that okay so here we go shaping y'all already know how i do this ain't nothing new we're just gonna make sure that everything is nice and shaped whatever technique that is you used if you need help specifically shaping i have one that i put out a couple of days ago specifically on shaping acrylic toes but with these type of colors we want to make sure that we did shape them to the best of our ability before we shape because i mean like when we did the application we want them to be as square as we can or whatever because these colors like i said they will easily flake the color will come off very easily okay so you have to kind of learn how to use your brush to shape everything with the acrylic first so that way this is just kind of like touching it up just crisping it up so um yeah that's what we're gonna go ahead and do now the smaller toes are gonna be easier because there's less of it but of course the challenge with that is obviously grabbing the toes or whatever is this video really 20 i mean 30 minutes long shall no it ain't hold on oh okay i see i didn't i didn't um go ahead and cut one of the songs so it's still back there i was about to say child please but um uh, yeah once you kind of get the basics down and you kind of realize what's the behind the scenes as to why these colors are acting a certain way because in reality yeah nails is beauty but it's also science y'all i'm not even finna lie to y'all i'm not even finna hold y'all the amount of stuff we learned just you like because i learned i have like a really good basic knowledge on a lot of things and behind the scenes i can use a lot of deductive reasoning and critical thinking to figure out my own problems and i feel like a lot of people would much rather have someone give them the answers which i mean i guess it's fine but without any type of deductive reasoning and critical um you know critical thinking skills it's going to be a lot harder for you to problem solve in the moment and i feel like it's very important as a nail tech to be able to problem solve in the moment and to be able to figure out uh, like cause and effect because obviously that's that right there is a really big um thing cause and effect Hey, I did something. What is that gonna 
affecting the next part of me doing this hey i made a mistake what can i do to fix that you know what i'm saying so don't don't be so caught up in like hey everything needs to be this way because you're still gonna you're still gonna um stumble and there's still gonna be challenges and stuff that come up but if you have those basic knowledge and that basic foundation it's going to be way easier for you to kind of take it easy and have an actual answer for stuff okay because i know there's a lot of people they'll just like oh wow this color is not working oh this color is trash but it's like no you need to figure out is this just a really bad color or is it something in your technique that you can improve to make it work for you because i feel like now in my career i'm at the point that even with colors that are like really horrible i can still make them work I don't want to, but I know I can still make it work, you know, like out of desperation or something. So once again, we're going to go ahead and file. Make sure you're filing the sides because I see a lot of times people are only filing the tip of the toenail, like the free edge, and that's not going to give you the crispness that you want. All right. I've been doing toes for a long time, like years now. And along the process, this is, I mean, along the way, this is a process that I know is fail proof but also find the process that works for you okay so with filing um and going over the surface of the nail i mean they're already pretty smooth to be honest with you but i still do go over the surface of the nail you need to be careful that you don't accidentally file too low especially because this is a thinner color and yes it's, it, it does have the strength there but if you file too low it's gonna cause issues like um, chipping like people are gonna be able to chip their toes a lot easier or the free edge can come apart because but because we did this in all one bead the likelihood of the free edge just falling off is very very low and that's why I do it this way as well for the smaller toes because they're gonna pretty much stay in intact okay so I'm really hoping that these tips are gonna help you guys with some of the more difficult colors or just if you're having a difficult time with with loose colors like you know loose beads in general but this color is so cute i encourage people to get baby pink on their toes people be scared because it's like oh well my nails aren't pink i tell people baby pink acts like a neutral it acts like white you can have white toes and anything on your hands and that's acceptable baby pink is very similar especially because when you look at feet with baby pink on them it just enhances the nice glow or tan that you have to your feet okay it's gonna just automatically look your feet make your feet look together and then on top of that it is a more lighter color so depending in certain lights and depending on the shade of pink that you choose some pinks out there are like so light that it looks like just white with a pink undertone you know what i'm saying so it's so many different ways that you can go with this like i mean look at my nails my nails is a nude pink and even i could have pink toes if i wanted to like it would still go so don't be scared to try something new other than white or you know french tip because this is a great alternative to having a like a neutral looking color on the toes if you're looking for something different okay don't be scared so then of course finishing off shaping with you know making sure the tip is just as straight as possible sometimes i do this with the drill sometimes i don't depending i felt like something was a little off and probably my i just didn't want to take the file and do it like this is quicker but you got to make sure the underneaths are debulked every time you file you're gonna have to go back in and do that nobody wants thick toenails on the tips like nobody want a thick free edge the rest of the toenail look natural but if you look underneath her toes they look they looking like clunkers that's not cute we want a natural appearance okay and also if it's too thick on the um free edge you are gonna have problems so just to let you know because it's it's unbalanced and all the weight is in the front which if anything happens it's going to cause something to lift up and that's not what you want okay Th things are very very finicky you really think about it like, that's why i say nails is really yeah it's beauty but a lot of people can't crack the code because they don't got that deductive reasoning they don't have that critical thinking and some people just don't care but it's like it's a lot of things that go behind doing nails besides just they look nice okay it's a lot of different things and reasons behind stuff so we gotta make sure we stay up all gay they keep it together Ooh, freak I'm so tired y'all I'm not even gonna lie today my only client is at 6 p.m. so I've really got all damn day I'm really just I don't know what I want to do I'm kind of thinking about having sushi 
I don't know. But y'all, look at this. Look how, just look how beautiful. And I'm going in to make sure everything is extra crisp. So you can see, this is why I said this is like a natural length for her because her natural toenails are not too much, necessarily too much shorter than this. Um, so it still does look natural for her. And if her natural toenails were to grow out, they would honestly probably look like this. Like, she has nice, thick toenails in a way. So, if she were to grow them out and shape them, they would look good. But, child, look at this, honey. You, well, come on. This is beautiful. Beautiful. I love putting the spray and getting the dusties out. So then I could take my pictures. Oh yeah, and then there, that acrylic, I forgot it got stuck, so I'm not gonna even lie. I did take a file and flick it off. I wouldn't suggest you doing this if like you don't know what you're doing, but I already knew like it wouldn't be hard to get off or nothing like that, so. Yeah, I did it. I did it, oh shoot. I'm sorry y'all, I'm over here yawning. I need to take a nap. Uh, Yeah, anyways, like I said. I apologize if this video is all over the place. I, um, I'm just tired. I'm tired. But y'all, look at her toes, okay? I really pride myself in doing such nice toes. Like, not only do I do nice nails, but the toes be looking off the freaking hook. Like, ain't no way these don't look like homegrown, okay? So, of course, we're going to go ahead and polish them. And this is when you're going to be able to tell, like, is it too... Um, see-through and translucent or you know is the color payoff really really nice you can see how nice and tough the cuticles are clearly I'm running low on polish and I need to refill it but I guess we're not gonna do that in that video but yeah so yes it did take a little longer using these more difficult colors it can take a little longer if you were not anticipating the fact that you know the drying time was different or you might have to use a few extra beads or whatever but you should be able to still stay within your allotted time, okay? And if you are a beginner, I suggest you... Ooh, not Ruth Chris. That sounds good. Now, um, yeah, if you are a beginner, definitely, definitely give yourself some time, okay? Especially with more difficult colors like this. Um, yeah, I really hope this was helpful to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I appreciate you guys' views. I appreciate you guys' comments. It makes me feel really dope and great that y'all feel like you can learn from me. Okay? Once again, here's the final result. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.